I said, this is, you're a moron, you're a moron. You know moron? A, a zombie. This is zombieism being cultivated. You can talk like that? That maybe your mother, you know, she had a dream and she's getting a baby. Is this how children come about in dreams? From dreams? No. But is it, is it the lowness that which they can go? Just to prove that, no, this is in the right. I said, look, here, a woman, God Almighty says, says, this is my command. Act of will, she had a baby. We agree, we believe. Thousand million Muslims, no arguments. We don't argue. We accept because we know this mighty messenger of God had no reason to lie. What was he getting out of this? The easier way would it have been to ridicule. So don't be a fool, man. What are you talking? Your sister, your mother, if she told you that, you believe her? He says, no. Then how can you believe this Jewess 2,000 years ago? No, but we believe. Because who testifies? God is speaking through Muhammad, telling us, so we submit. Amanna Saddakna. He says, we hear and we affirm. So, they are reasoning with her. He said, how, how is it that you have brought this child into the world without a husband? What can she say? She said, Fa the Quran says, Fa asharat ilay, but she merely pointed to the babe. You know, ask him. So they say, Qalu kaifa nukallimu man kana fil mahdi sabiyya. Said, how can we talk to one who's a child in the cradle? How can we talk to him, this little thing? What can he tell us? And by a miracle, Jesus spoke. From his mother's arms, defended his mother against an unbelieving audience. So qala inni Abdullah. Said, most certainly I am the servant of Allah. He has given me revelation. And he has made me a prophet. He spoke and defended his mother. The first miracle attributed to Jesus in the Holy Quran is that he spoke as an infant from his mother's arms. The first miracle of Jesus Christ, the other picture, the first miracle. You read in the Gospel of St. John, I think it's chapter 3 at the beginning. Jesus and his disciples go to the marriage feast at Cana. Cana. And they run short of wine, W-I-N-E, wine. So his mother comes to him and says, Son, look, these people are in a problem. They have run short of wine. Help them out. Believing that he's got mysterious powers to help these people solve the problem. So Jesus blurts out, according to the Bible, He says, woman, woman, what have I to do with thee? My time is not yet. Woman. In the whole of the 27 books of the New Testament, not once does he call his mother, mother. Woman, woman. I'm asking in the Hebrew language, is there no word for mother? This word woman he uses for the prostitute. Same word. You see, the woman who was caught, caught in the act, they bring her to Jesus. He said, look, this woman, we caught her in the act. What must we do to her? They're putting him to the test. They're trying to get him embroiled with the government or with the religious authorities. Either way, he loses. If he says, stone her, that was the law, book of Leviticus, that the adulterer and the adulteress must be stoned to death. If he says, stone her as a man of God, he must abide by the law. Stone her. And they would have stoned her and killed her. And if they were apprehended by the law, by the government, they said, look, our Messiah told us to. This is what our Messiah said. So he's in conflict with the government. Because adultery was not a capital crime in the Roman Empire, nor is it today in Christendom. It is not a crime at all. Adultery is no crime. Did you know that? Adultery is not a crime in any Christian nation on earth. It's not a crime. The law will not hold you responsible for committing adultery. He calls a prostitute woman. Where are thine accusers? So he says, no, they're all gone. So he says, all right, go and sin no more. Woman. He says, there's not a single place he calls his mother, mother, in the Bible. So he says, woman, what have I to do with thee? My time is not yet. So she persuades him. He says, look, man, help them out. These people are in difficulty. He says, all right, fill up the vats. You know, the wine vats with water. And they fill it up. And he turned the water into wine. And they drank. And they remarked, the drunkards of the night who have been drinking, imbibing all night, 
They're remarking, why have you kept the best wine for the last? The best wine, why have you kept it to the last? So my brother Jimmy Swaggart, he says in his book that that wine was pure grape juice. I said, brother, I didn't have a chance to talk about that, but I said, brother, Swaggart, you see if a man has an imbibing wine for a whole night and the things run dry and you give him pure grape juice, that grape juice is like mud water to him because there is a law involved. You drink 5% alcoholic drink, 5%, 5%, after a while your senses are getting dulled. You need 10% to make you feel that it's alcohol, something to give you a kick. Then you need 20% to make you to feel that there's something potency in it. You have to increase the alcoholic content to make you feel that it's better than the previous one, it's better than the previous one. If you give such a man grape juice, he says it's mud water, what is it? Insipid, no taste. <laughs> and he's telling us in his book called Alcohol, this is one of the, he's telling us, and I have no reason to contradict him unless you have, he said there are 11 million drunkards in America, 11 million drunkards. And 44 million heavy drinkers. Get that book, small book. I have a sample here, I think. Alcohol. 11 million drunkards and 44 million heavy drinkers. And he says, to me, there's no difference between the two. Means 55 million drunkards, as far as Jimmy Swaggart is concerned. In my country, they don't call them drunkards. It's an insult. A guy can punch you on the jaw if you call him a drunkard. You have to call him alcoholic. You know, the poor man is sick. This is a sickness. He needs treatment. It's not a sin. Alcohol is not a sin. It's a sickness. Jimmy Swaggart calls a spade a spade. He said drunkards. 55 million drunkards in America. 11 million drunkards and heavy drinkers. I said, I make no difference. I said, yes, brother. I said, go a step further. Islam will take you a step further. He said, even your social drinkers are on the same level. They're breaking the laws and commandments of God as given in the last and final revelation of God. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, he said, whatever intoxicates in greater quantity is forbidden even in smaller quantity. No excuse for a nip or a tot. The Holy Quran says, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu, O you who believe, innam al khamru, most certainly intoxicants, wal maisiru, and gambling, wal ansabu, and fortune telling, wal aslamu, and idol worship, rizum minam al shaitan, are an abomination of Satan's handiwork, fachtani buhu la allakum tuflihun. It's a shan such abomination that you may prosper. And one pronouncement, he created the biggest society of teetotalists in the world. 1,000 million Muslims, as a people, as a whole, they don't imbibe that filth. We have our black sheep. We are not all angels. We know some Muslims can drink the Christian under the table. That we know. We are ashamed of them. But as a people, as a whole, the biggest society of teetotalists, people who don't imbibe, are the Muslims. And what did it? This word of God. This is a miracle. You perform a million miracles and you can't change people. Here, without any miracles, he transforms nations. This is a miracle. What miracle are you talking about? So, the Quranic first miracle of Jesus, he spoke and defended his mother against an unbelieving audience. The first miracle of Jesus, he turned water into wine. Since then, wine has flowed like water in Christendom. And there's no way out. The preachers, Jimmy Swaggart is telling us, there's a book called Preachers, and he's telling us in that book, he said they're at a church conference, all these preachers, the evangelists, the hot gospelers, the Bible thumpers, you know what they call them evangelists? Born again Christians? Yes, at a conference, we asked, somebody suggested this, look, those people who are against, the, 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 against alcohol, please stand up, that you can go out in, when you return, Preach in your churches against the evil of alcohol. Please stand up. And Jimmy Swaggart says, nobody stood up. That means they all opted for alcohol. Why? And they reason. Jimmy Swaggart said, the reasoning is, he said, look, our Lord Jesus turned water into wine.